Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shoma, and I'm jumping in on this rant real fast about the Miami Hurricanes. As you all know by now, I'm a Hurricanes fan. I have suffered for 20 years of rather mediocre football from one of the most storied college football programs in the history of college football. Miami did more in 25 years than most programs have done in the history of college football. Five national championships ranging from 1983 to 2001, multiple other appearances in the national championship game. I mean, you look at how many games that they've I mean, they lost to Penn State. The, the, the Penn State loss was a championship game. The loss to Tennessee would have won them the national championship. The Ohio State game naturally was a national championship game. The one to Alabama was a national championship game. So at the very least, they played in nine national championships from 1983 to 2001. So that's, what, 19 years? 18, 18 years? 18 years span, they played in nine. They played in 50% of the national championship games in the, over an 18-year period. <clears throat> I mean, absolutely a dominating program. During that time, a dominating program during that time, as I mentioned. Um, but the last, since 2005, it's been very, very unpleasant. <clears throat> you know, they made one power, big bowl game, which was the Orange Bowl in whatever year it was when Mark Rick was the coach. They started off 10-0 and 0 and then lost their last three. Lost to Pitt, got smoked by Clemson and then lost in the Orange Bowl to Wisconsin. But, yeah, so outside of that one bowl game, the Kings haven't been to a meaningful bowl game since 2004, <clears throat> if my memory serves me correct. Um, I believe that was when they beat Florida State in the uh, – no, it wasn't. Shit. Was that the year before? <laughs> that might have been the year before. They beat Florida in the Peach Bowl in 04. What about 2003? <clears throat> 2003. All right, that's when they beat Florida State in the Orange Bowl, 16-14. They finished 11-2 uh, and two that season with losses to Virginia Tech and Tennessee. And then 2005 is when it all went to hell. They finished nineteen. They they finished nine and three. Got absolutely smoked by LSU in the Peach Bowl, and that was the beginning of the end for the Hurricanes. <clears throat> that said, there are things to be excited about right now. I have always made a point to not get ahead of myself when it comes to Miami Hurricanes football, because the second they start making you feel good, they have a major choke job. Last year, game five, Georgia Tech. Again, they should have won by 20 or 30, and they lose. Not only lose, but lose in a bad way. They lost that game in as bad a way as you can possibly imagine with Mario Cristobal not kneeling the ball out to end the game. Instead, they fumble. It wasn't actually a fumble either, but they deserve what they got. They fumble, and Georgia Tech comes back and wins the game. Heartbreaking, and it destroyed the season. It destroyed the season. So you're talking about a team that would have been 5-0, and rolling, even on a tough win against a team that they should beat by a lot, but you escape those games, and you can smile and live the fight another day. This team this year, <clears throat> this team is different. This team is absolutely different. I was at that game this past Saturday, uh, yesterday actually, against Ball State. We endured two and a half hours of lightning delays. Now, that can affect the team in a variety of ways. It can make them be a little sluggish because they've had to warm up not twice, not once, not twice. I think they warmed up for this game three separate times. And people leave. You know, you're, you're sitting around for a while. And I'll say flat out, I left in the middle of the third quarter. It was 38 nothing. But Miami is looking good. 
this they look good. 62-0, 750 yards of offense. Defense gives up 115 yards. Cam Ward did not play past the 10-minute mark of the third quarter. 19 of 28, 346, five touchdowns. Unbelievable running game. Ajay Allen, seven carries, 104. Jordan Lyle, 11 for 71. Mark Fletcher, six for 53. Bro, this team, and this is without, and this Damian Martinez had three carries. This team looks good. They look real good right now. It is, it, it, it is serious. It, it is serious how good they look. Dominating performance. It was an absolutely dominating performance. They were a little sluggish to start off. It's 17 0. And you're like, uh, eh, they don't they're making mistakes. They're committing some penalties. They had some stuff called back, whatever. But they hit they they scored 14 points in the final like two minutes of the second of the second quarter, which pretty much iced the game. You know, they, they got a pick and a uh where was it here? They, tur- they turn over on downs, they score on two plays, 53 yards, touchdown, then they get a pick, then another touchdown. And it was just a route from there. I mean, it was it was a wipeout. They were playing their backup and their third string quarterbacks in this game. I mean, you know, you can't ask for much more in a game like this. Um, actually, they didn't they didn't play there. They played Emory Williams. He played. Um, I I don't know if he's going to play more than another game or so because I, don't, I think they want to redshirt him. But he went eleven for twelve. He's the next quarterback after Cam Ward. I mean, if Cam Ward gets hurt, Emory Williams is going to be the one that's in there, in my opinion. I, I can't see it not being him because he'd probably be the starter if it wasn't for Cam Ward. That said, they look good, man. They look hella good. Uh, they're making plays everywhere. I-, I love how this team is playing. They have energy, passion. They're bringing it. They're absolutely bringing it. Now, again, 62-0 versus Ball State. They played better against Ball State than they played versus FAMU. And they won the FAMU game easily, obviously. They won that game 56-9. They won that game 56-9. Um, they, they were very sloppy in that game. But Ball State, I mean, I know Ball State's no world beater, but that was an ass whooping. That was a straight-up ass whooping. And over three games, you're talking about they have scored – Shit. Hundred and fifty nine points. They're averaging fifty three points a game. They could have they could have scored more versus Florida. They turned it off. They could have scored more against FAMU. They turned it off. Consider the fact that Cam Ward has not played in the fourth quarter of the last two weeks. In fact, he hasn't played most of the third quarter of the last two weeks. He's doing what he's doing in a half. Cam Ward is absolutely special. You surround Cam Ward with talent, and you're seeing a quarterback who is hella good. And right now, he's absolutely the leader for the Heisman. And if he continues at this at this pace, Cam, Ward's gonna, Cam Ward will win the Heisman Trophy. He looks incredible. The game that will come and make, give a good idea will be at Louisville. Be at Louisville, probably their toughest game on their schedule. The way you see FSU playing right now, unless something otherworldly happens, <clears throat> FSU, Miami will beat FSU by five touchdowns. I don't want to hear about rivalries. If FSU continues to look the way they've been looking, Miami should beat them by five touchdowns. It'll be an absolute massacre. But I am highly impressed with this team. I'm highly impressed with Cam Ward. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm impressed. And I try not to get out of myself and say the U is back and shit like that. But man, we're getting closer. We're getting closer. They got they got USF on the road, state rivalry. Then they got Virginia Tech at Cal. At Cal will be interesting. And I'm gonna here's why. Cal's not very good. Cal's not very good. Um, they're three and zero, oh, but Cal's three wins are. I mean, hey, maybe they are better than I thought. <laughs> they have a win over Auburn, which is kind of surprising. But last year's Cal, I think they were 
pretty bad, if I recall correctly. Last year's Cal was six and seven. They weren't very good. So, I mean, my concern on Cal is that you're, it's a, it's a cross country flight, the new environment. But I think the fact that Cam Ward is on this team is beneficial because he was in the Pac-12 last year. He has played Cal. He is, he know, he understands. Um, he did play at Cal last year. Granted, they lost the game, but he had a monster game in that game. So <clears throat> he he understands the environment there. So that'd be my one concern. It's a cross country flight, but other than that, their toughest game is going to be at Louisville. And that's going to tell the story for the Hurricanes. They can't lose that game. I will say that. They cannot lose that game. The schedule is looking look, looking worse and worse because Florida's so bad. <clears throat> now, Florida lost 33-20 to Texas A&M, and there's rumors out there that Florida's going to dump Billy Napier by tomorrow, which is wild. But it's one of those things where FSU is so bad. We don't have Clemson on the, on the schedule. The toughest game legitimately is against Louisville on the road. So that's the question at the end of the day is, you know, Louisville. Yeah. They do play at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech always is a problem for Miami. Uh, so you you can't sleep on that game at all. <clears throat> and Syracuse on the road. Syracuse on the road, last game of the year in the Carrier Dome. Never an easy place to play. You know, they have Kyle McCord playing quarterback, who was at Ohio State, good player. We'll see how good Syracuse is as, as the season goes on, but that could be a huge game. I mean, it's a big – Miami cannot lose. Miami cannot lose a game in in conference and make the playoffs if they don't win the ACC championship. They go undefeated and they lose in the ACC championship, which I don't want to wish, wish to happen. But if they go undefeated and they lose the ACC championship, I think it's realistic to presume that they would make the playoff. Even at a, at eleven and one, I mean, realistically, <clears throat> you're looking at a situation where they'll be ranked in the top three going into the ACC championship. They'll be ranked in the top three, and if they were to lose, how far are they going to drop? They would drop. They couldn't drop more than like six or seven, eight, maybe. You know, so it'll be hard to keep them out of the playoff if they lost in the ACC championship after going undefeated. All that said, the easiest thing to do is to win the ACC championship and make yourself and make them have to take you and get a, get a bye week. But overall, Cam Ward is a special dude. He's so impressive watching him out there. He's cool, man. I, and I and I know I say cool. Cool doesn't always get me happy because I get nervous about cool. But he makes the right decisions. He, he makes them since that bad throw at Florida. I, I mean, he hasn't made a bad throw yet. There hasn't been a ball that you could say should have been intercepted. Like, you know how hard that is <clears throat> when you talk about a quarterback and say, oh, he made a bad throw. It was, it was dropped. The pick was dropped. Other than that bad throw in the first, in the first game, in the first what quarter, I think it was, or first quarter versus Florida, he hasn't made a bad throw where you say, shit, that was almost intercepted or it could have been intercepted. And you haven't you haven't seen that. He just makes good decisions. Like he he's completing right now like an otherworldly percentage. His his completion percentage this year right now is seventy three percent. That's like out, that's outrageous. Eleven point six per per completion or per attempt. I don't know if that's the attempt or per completion. His QB rating is two hundred nine. <clears throat> I mean, holy crap. He's good, man. And I'm excited as a Hurricanes fan. I don't want myself my, let it get ahead of me and stuff like that, like I always say. But I tell you what, Cam Ward is that dude. He is absolutely that dude. Very, very impressed by him. And he will be the difference for Miami. His health is critical. But their line is good. And they were missing a starting offensive lineman. They were missing a couple. Of, they're still missing Ruben Bain, missing a couple of starters on defense. But Miami has a team this year, man. Miami has a team. I'm not going to say it yet. Give me a couple more weeks before I do. In fact, when does Miami play Louisville? 
Miami's ranked eighth now in the country. They put, we played Louisville t- on October 19th. So there's one, two, there's three games. So they will be 6-0 and going into Louisville. Let's see what happens. But, yeah, Miami's getting there. Miami's close. Loving what I'm seeing. Leave your thoughts and comments. Share this video. Like this video. Come on now.